Hi, I'm Madison and welcome back to my channel. Today I have my ALA vlog for you. So, it is Friday. I'm about to head out to ALA. Um, I was supposed to leave an hour ago, but last night at 1.30 in the morning, I found out that my AC unit was leaking water. So the maintenance guy just came and fixed my AC unit. So I'm gonna head out in a sec. I have, God, my backpack there. Got my duffel bag here. Got this bag here, which looks really stupid, but it has sheets in it. So I can put sheets on my, on Soleil's air mattress. I'm going to ALA with three other booktubers. So Katie from Kitty's Book Nook, Steph from Shut Up and Read, and Soleil from Little Reader's Corner. And we're staying at Soleil's place um, in DC, which is really fun. I'm really excited for it. I was gonna curl my hair and do all myself all pretty, but I did not have the time because I worked until 12 o'clock today too. Oh, what a day and a half. Anyway, I am also bringing a crap ton of books that I'm unhauling. I'll insert a clip here to show you guys like what they all are because you guys haven't seen my unhaul yet. That should be going up next week. I'm excited to unhaul all those books. I just need to get rid of them basically. But I do have two packages here from Aritzia because I wanted to open them on camera because I love buying stuff from Aritzia and I think, I don't know, sometimes I get, cast, I get asked um, where some of my clothes are from. So Aritzia recently had its clientele sale. And so I bought stuff during that. Do the first, first Aritzia package. This has got, oh yay. Okay. So. This has got my two new shorts that I'm gonna be wearing at ALA. These cute little linen shorts. I don't own any of these before and I tried them on and they're really cute. So I got them in black and then I got them in this color as well, which is, I think quite cute. And then I also have this really cute sundress. Well, it's like a slip dress that has like this really nice pattern on it. I don't know, I'm gonna show you guys the pattern up close. That's what the pattern looks like. I think it's really pretty, so I'm gonna bring this with me as well. So those three are all coming. And then in here, I'm so excited for this. This is what I'm about to wear while I drive up. It's around about a four hour drive. Zelda's coming with me, I got drop off at a cat place. So I got this new um, sports bra. I mean, that's not that special, but I think it's a cute one. I got that to wear with this dope, bright fucking orange hoodie. Isn't this sick? Some people are gonna be like, what? But I think it's cool. A little bit cropped, not too cropped. It's bright orange. I just love orange lately. I bought so much shit in orange, and I'm just excited to wear this. So, yep, that is my plan. I'm gonna go buy bagels and head out to LA. Let's go. Hello. If anyone's wondering how my day is going, it's not going great. So it's currently th four o'clock. And I've got another four hours to go to get to fucking D's. I don't even know what I did. I messed up somehow. It took me an hour to get, it took me, it definitely took me longer than an hour to get into Jersey to drop off Zelda. There's no way. Mm -mm. It took so much longer to get out of Jersey. And I'm gonna be late. I'm not gonna get until four. Thank God I went out and bought a bagel for me to eat. Because I'm not gonna get until eight o'clock and I haven't eaten anything. I'm just annoyed. Anyway. I have to go to Target and buy a new warm out because my warm out for my phone also, it's just not, my day is not going well, guys. It's not going well. So anyway, I hope no one's looking at me. I think I'm a weirdo. I'm in a Target parking lot. Anyway, I'm going to go. I'm happy. Got my thing here. Also, 30 minutes after I left, the other package with my Ritzia stuff arrived. So whatever. The world's just not loving me today, but that happens sometimes. Okay. I'll talk to you guys when I get to DC. Bye. Here's Katie, Jay Chillin. Look how cute this setup is. Look at all of Soleil's shelves. And then my lovely Steph Boo Boo. <sighs> and yeah, super fun. So we're just gonna chill tonight. I went out before I left. Look, we got new, we tried new white claw flavors, which sounds cool. Um, and that's gonna be it. So I'll update you guys later as we keep doing stuff. And I'm just exhausted. So goodbye. Okay, so we're about to leave for our very first day. Got outfits on, looking all cute. Look at my boo thing. <laughs> we're gonna get ready.
so it is day two of ALA. I almost forgot what the hell we were doing for some reason. Oh my god, it's right now. Um, pretty chill day today. We got a lot of books yesterday. Well, I didn't get that many books. We got a solid amount of books yesterday. So leaves are all over there, piled in the corner if you can see them. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go do some like sightseeing today because it's Katie's first time in DC. And that's the main little sweat thing. What are you just okay? <laughs> okay, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye. officially back from ALA. It's been like a week since ALA. Well, over a week. It's now Saturday. Oh my god, such a crazy time. I'm going to be hauling all my books for you tomorrow, but I just wanted to have a little quick sit down before we get into the book haul portion. Uh, ALA was like a four-day event, and then after those four days, um, we left Sully's place in DC, and uh, Katie and I had a concert here in New York on Wednesday night. Uh, we saw Stray Kids, who is a K-pop group, so we saw them. We had sound check and everything. It was so amazing. We had the, the whole VIP thing, and it was so much fun. We were, like, at the Prudential Center for, like, eight hours, which was a lot, a lot. But we had so much fun. Um, I freaking loved it. <laughs> I'm exhausted. It's a three day weekend till I fourth weekend. I'm gonna start a new vlog today. We're reading some books. This wasn't really like a proper vlog because I didn't read anything in it, but it's more so like one to combine going to ALA with my ALA book haul. So it's just a bit of a strange vlog regardless. But um, it's like my first time like picking up a book in like over a week today and just a little exhausted. But um, just wanna come on, say hi before I finish everything up tonight with my book haul. I hauled around about, I think, 10 books or something when I was there. I, I didn't grab a bunch because like that was never my big aim was to grab a bunch of books. Um, it was more just to see everyone and kind of get a couple of things that I was excited about. But yeah, do that tomorrow. Okay, bye. <laughs> so that was my ALA vlog. It was so much fun at ALA. I was a lot more efficient this time and a lot more selective in the arcs that I did pick. So I'm gonna go through those with you right now and I'm super excited. So I did get a finished copy of Beast Boy and Raven by Cami Garcia and Gabriel Piccolo. I'm so excited for this because I have followed both of them on Instagram for ages and I really enjoy their um, art style. So I haven't read this yet and I'm very excited to get to it. It's Teen Titans graphic novel. So yeah. Okay. So, oh, should I do this in release order? Nah, whatever. I can't be bothered. So in the first books we have here is The Poison Season by Ma Rutherford. This comes out in December, on December 6th. This is a YA fantasy. I'm so excited for this. Ma Rutherford is an author that I absolutely adore. So you're following Lilo. She spent her entire life in Andala, which is this island. And this island has like this bloodthirsty forest on it. And it is also surrounded by this poisonous lake. And the point of it is to keep outsiders, you know, from coming to them. One day, however, she does see a boy drowning in the lake and she decides to save him, which she is not supposed to do. So she saves him, brings him to the island and ends up having to look after him and she has to keep it a secret from everyone and they fall in love and I guess some other things happen along the way. It's super intriguing to see how this kind of goes. It's got an absolutely gorgeous cover and I'm just, I'm pumped. The next one we have is For Butter or, you know what, I'm gonna change. I hate how I'm sitting right now. Give me a sec. We then have For Butter or Worse by Erin La Rosa. This is a enemies to lovers romance. I know this because my friend Syl at the book Voyages absolutely adored it. And it says, let's see what this is about. So you have Nina and Leo, they are big enemies. Nina is a chef and Leo is a restaurateur. And the two of them are now co-hosts for this upcoming um, cooking competition reality TV show. And they're very much excited for it, except for one point they end up getting caught in like a compromising situation. It isn't actually a compromising situation, but the paparazzi makes it look that way and it ends up like boosting the ratings of the show. And so the two of them end up having to play along with like having a secret romance to help with the ratings, even though they hate each other. Or do they? 
I'm so excited. I've never really read that in anything like this before, but I love competition tea, uh, cooking shows. So I'm hoping I really love this one. We then have A Ruinous Fate by Kaylee Smith. I've seen this all over Twitter. The author is really sweet on there. This comes out in January of 2023. So you're following Carla and she is a witch with a long streak of bad luck. Um, and like a lot of the other witches from her place, her fate is directly tied to the witch's dice, which is a set of artifacts that bless her kind with limitless magic, but also put them on a power towards destruction. I don't really get how these die work. However, it turns out that she is only three rolls away from becoming the last blood warrior and starting a fate war that will decimate her people and eradicate magic. So she has to do something to reset her fate and to like stop this. And so she has a journey into the never ending forest with her ex and his enigmatic older brother um, to end up stopping everything. Um, so I don't know, this sounds really intriguing. I'm not 100% sure how this magic system works yet, but I'm all about it. And I know that our main character has got two different colored eyes. I'm pretty sure she's a plus size MC as well. and. I don't know, the fan art for this looks dope already and I'm just super intrigued. So we shall see, it seems like fun and I'm all about like magical dye sending you into womp womp land. <laughs> we then have Light Lark by Alex Astor. This is huge, huge, huge on book talk. Alex Astor is huge on book talk as herself. Um, I actually have no idea what this is even about apart from the fact that the author has just been raving about it and I've seen other people hold it. So. Yeah, let's find out together. This says, welcome to the centennial. Every 100 years, the island of Light Lark appears for only 100 days to host a deadly game where rulers of six realms fight to break their curses and win unparalleled power. Each ruler has something to hide. Each curse is uniquely wicked and to break them, one ruler must die. Oh, this is really cool. So it's like a fight to the death between the crown rulers of different kingdoms and whoever fails, womp womp. But if you win, you end up saving your entire kingdom. Oh, what? Is this gonna be a se- Oh, I don't like when there's always like little things in the corners. Is this gonna be an entire series? <gasps> How many different POVs do we have? Oh wow, I'm actually super intrigued. I did not look up what this is about beforehand. Oh wow. We then have The Drowned Woods by Emily Lloyd-Jones. I grabbed this because it is gonna be one of the book boxes. I don't remember if it's Illuminate or Fairy Loop, but one of them is gonna have this as their box of the month. And so I like to read it beforehand to see if I'm actually gonna enjoy it before I pick the box. <laughs> so this is a magical ethereal standalone fantasy set in the world of the Bone Houses. Oh! I love the Bone House. I had no idea that this was set in the same world as it. I have not read that. I, re I mean, I haven't read that in ages. I read that when it came, I got that at BookCon 2019. I haven't read that book in years. Oh, good God. So you're following Mer, and she is the last living water diviner and has spent years running from the prince who bound her into his service because this prince ordered her to locate the wells of his enemies and he ended up poisoning them without her knowledge, causing hundreds of deaths. So she's run away from him to stop him from like killing thousands and thousands of people with her magic. However, her old handler has come to her with a new proposition and that is to use her powers to bring down the prince who abused them both. With him and a motley crew of allies, including a fake cursed young man, the Lady of Thieves and a corgi that may or may not be a spy, she will finally be able to steal her precious, her precious freedom. There's a corgi! There's a magical corgi?! Bruh! Bruh, I'm so here for a magical corgi. Are you kidding me? So this sounds really cool. I love quests. I love water magic. Water magic is one of my favorites. I, I, I was always a kid growing up that was like, if I had to have elemental powers, I would choose water as my element. So ta-da, I mean, I'm a water science. So that kind of makes sense, but I'm excited for that. We then have Strike the Zetha by Joan He. This is an ALA exclusive bound manuscript. So it's not even like a proper arc or anything. So I don't actually know if I'm gonna be able to figure out this book is even about. <laughs> because there's not even an actual description. <gasps> there's art on the inside of this. Oh my God, what? You guys, this is so cool. There's already a map inside. Wow, that's actually really impressive. This isn't even an art. This is a bound manuscript, dudes. Okay, so, she's, so this is based on Chinese history on the Chinese story of the three kingdoms. That's all I can tell you. I don't know what else this is and I don't feel like getting up to look it up, but I'm really intrigued for it. And Joan here is an author who I have adored reading from previously. So I'm super excited for that. Then we have Mr. Perfect on Paper by Jean Meltzer. So you're following Dara and she is the creator of a popular Jewish dating app, JMate. 
and she even has her own like special checklist of all the things that like a perfect husband would like check off and this perfect checklist ends up getting like leaked to the media and this news anchor ends up proposing that they turn her search for the perfect husband into a TV show. And then you have Chris, who is a non-Jewish single dad, and Dara's hunt for like Mr. Perfect is the ratings boost that he's shown needs. And so that he's like the one who's like helping her do this and he ends up falling for her and she falls for him. And even though like she doesn't actually meet any of the criteria of like her perfect man. And so, I don't know, it sounds really interesting. Then we have one of the most exciting books and that is The Makeup Test. This is by, I'm like, where's the name of the author? Jenny L. Howe. I'm so excited. It's one of the most anticipated books of this year, most anticipated romances especially. You have Alison Avery and Colin Benjamin. Um, they are exes and they are both in this competitive PhD program and the two of them are assigned to TA for the very same professor. However, only one of them is actually allowed to be the TA for this professor and so they end up having to duke it out and I'm so excited. Like rival TAs in college. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I was a TA in college, undergrad, not like grad like these ones are. But I love being a TA and this is gonna be so much fun. I'm super intrigued for this. Like, come on, this seems priceless. So I'm super, 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 super excited for this one. Then we have The American Roommate Experience by Elena Armas. So I'm excited for this. This is the author of The Spanish Love Deception. I have not read The Spanish Love Deception, but I was intrigued to get this one because you know, I'm a romance reader. So you have Rosie and her life just is not going well. She had a really well paying job, but then ended up quitting it to become a romance author, but she's now in a slump and can't write anything. Then the ceiling of her New York apartment literally falls in on her. So she goes to stay at her best friend Lena's apartment, not knowing that her best friend Lena has subleased her apartment out to her cousin Lucas. And so Lucas ends up saying, hey, your life is shit, it's fine. You can stay here. We can both stay in this apartment together, except for the fact that Lucas keeps walking around to town. He's this really hot Spanish dude, and he ends up proposing that to help her with her writer's block, that he will be her muse and will take her on a bunch of experimental dates to give her ideas. Oh my God, so many amazing things in this. I'm so excited. And as I said, like I haven't read from her yet and everyone seems to really adore her writing. So. I'm really intrigued to see how this goes. We then have Vanessa Jarrod's Got a Man by Laquette. This sounds really cool. So this follows a woman, she's 40 years old. She's divorced. She's just trying to live out her life and enjoy it until one day this man comes to her door and she's like, who are you? What do you want? He goes, hi, I know your ex-husband. She goes, okay, bye. And ends up showing the door in his face. Turns out that this guy's little sister is about to get married to um, our main character, Vanessa's ex-husband. And he's like, your ex-husband's a crap dude. I don't want my little sister marrying him. Can you please help me stop him? And she's like, I don't want anything to do with my ex-husband, goodbye. And he goes, well, look at the ring that he proposed to her with. And she ends up seeing that her ex-husband has proposed to this new fiance with her grandmother's ring. And she's like, oh, no, 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 no. I am gonna stop this engagement because I want my ring back. And it's her falling in love with the sister's brother. So yeah, I'm excited. I love that kind of stuff. Then we have Mistakes Were Made by Meryl Wilsner. I don't know anything about this except for the fact that it is the lesbian MILF romance. So, um. I don't really want to know anything else except for that, but it's about a girl falling for her best friend's mum. Do you need to know anything else? No, that's literally everything. We then have When in Rome by Sarah Adams. This is the author of The Cheat Sheet. So we're following Amelia and she is a pop star and she's just getting really burnt out after years and years and years of just like being famous. So she ends up getting in her car in the middle of the night and driving to Rome, Kentucky. However, her car ends up breaking down halfway and she ends up uh, in the front lawn of this guy named Noah Walker. And so the two of them are off to like not a good start. Noah is the grumpy owner of a local pie shop and the two of them end up falling in love. He is her grumpy tour guide and she's just a pop star who wants a break. And I'm excited. She, he lets her stay in his guest room while her car gets fixed after it's broken down. And I don't know, this feels like it's perfect because this is the exact kind of shit that I love. I love small town romances. I like when the girl's like super rich and the guy's just like this grumpy, like who know what. And it's just, it seems like the perfect recipe for me. The only difference is that he's not like a single dad. That would make it like icing on the top if he was a single dad, 
but it's all good. It's all good. I don't need single dads all the time. <laughs> that sounds so awful, but this still sounds like it's going to be, I'm so excited for this. This one I expect to be like five stars out of everything here. This just has everything that I adore, like all my buzzwords. So we then have honey and spice. I don't know what this is about. All I read was the very top here and decided to pick it up. So it says, Introducing this vibrant debut novel, which centers on a young black British woman who has no interest in love and unexpectedly finds herself caught up in a fake relationship with the man she warned all the girls about. All I heard was fake relationship and I got really excited. We shall see how it goes. It seems like a really fun debut novel. I don't know if it'll be like a spicy book, like if it'll be sexy or anything, but I'm always here for some fake dating and for people to like fake date to like improve their like reputations. And I feel like that's always a positive. Okay, two more books left. We have Belladonna by Adeline Grace. I feel like this book has been everywhere. Everyone has seen it. I did read Adeline Grace's previous duology, um, All the Stars and Teeth. So I'm excited to see what she does with this. So you're following 19 year old Signa. She was orphaned as a baby, but has like a lot of money somehow. And so she just keeps getting passed off to like different guardians who are all interested in her money versus her well being, except that they each end up dying. And so her last remaining relatives are the Hawthorns who live in Thorn Grove, except the patriarch Elijah is still mourning his late wife when she gets there, Lillian. And so she's trying to, do, and so she's come into this place where this dude is like really depressed over his dead wife. And then you have Percy, who is the eldest son, who was trying to, you know, like deal with, you know, all the, the dad, like not being present. And then you have the daughter, Blythe, who is suffering from the same illness that the mother died from. And so Cygna's just like, what have I walked into? This whole family is just a mess until she ends up coming into contact with the dead mother's ghost. Who's like, Hey, I was poisoned. Please find the person who poisoned me. So Signa enters into an agreement with death. I guess she ends up becoming the friends of the God of death and ends up using her dangerous magic to figure out what happened to the dead mother. I feel like I explained that really messily, but um, I'm intrigued. I feel like I've seen everyone talk about it. So I don't know, we'll see. And then lastly, we have Defend the Dawn by Bridget Camera. This is the sequel to defy the night i was like where is my copy of this book <laughs> it's over there i don't even remember how the first book ended but i'm intrigued to continue on with it i read an arc of the first book so i'm excited to read an arc of the second one and there's not really much else for me to say to that so yeah those are all the books that i got during ala let me know if there are any of these that you're super excited for and yeah that's gonna be it hope you guys did enjoy this video if you did please leave one down below if you want to see more of me please go to my channel and until next time thanks so much everyone Bye bye